Dave the MMP back on YOLO for a little sailboat DIY fun. Uh, I'm going to talk about power system. Um, so I'm working on a Victron power system in this boat. Uh, it's a Victron connected boat. So I've got a, a VE network and uh, everything is plugged into my Raspberry Pi, which is essentially working the same as a Servo GX. I've got a nice display on it. And so it tells me everything about it. And kind of the next step was um, AC inverters. So I've been watching the prices of Victron gear and it's been slowly rising and rising, rising, you know, five to 10%. I've watched the inverter price and it's been holding steady for a while. Um, and Amazon hasn't raised their prices yet, but I noticed a bunch of other websites that I look at. Uh, there's one in Canada called volts.ca and they import a lot of Victron gear and their prices are starting to rise on the Victron gear. So I figured, okay, I better pull the trigger on Amazon and I managed to get an inverter at the normal price before the price increase. So that was something on my list and I figured I better just buy it before the price went up. So let's take a look. Okay, so here it is, Victron 12 volt. I'm running a 12 volt system, 1200 watts. Um, and it is their Phoenix inverter and it's good for marine and mobile equipment a lot of people put these in their vans a lot of people put them in their sailboats so there we go let's have a look okay, let's see if i can get this box open here okay you get a little manual and she's very well packed in foam victron does this with a lot of their bigger gear so okay, this thing look. is a bit of a beast it's about 14 inches long it's not very high or very wide it's got uh, the business end of it here, so you got DC input, VE Direct, which I'm going to put into my Raspberry Pi, which essentially is running Venus OS. Um, you got a little switch here, you've got the remote on off, which I purchased the switch for it so I can turn it on and off. And I think at the other end, it's just got, it's got the AC out, so just a regular plug and then the fan blows straight through. This thing is about 18 pounds, 17 or 18 pounds, so it's pretty serious. In this end of it, it's got the uh, transformer. Most of the AC inverters don't have transformers built in, so that's what I really like about the Victron gear. They really do a good job of their inverters. I do have another really small inverter that came with the boat. Uh, I'll take a look at that. So back here, this is the inverter that I was using. Uh, it's a motor master inverter. It comes from Canadian Tire. I don't know. It's probably just made offshore and uh, had a couple of outlets on it. And it even had a USB port that I used to charge my phone with. Um, but this doesn't have any sort of transformer on it or anything. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty weak. It says it's 1500 watts, but I don't believe it. I disconnected it and uh, we'll take it out of here. I don't want to have anything in this side of the V-berth. This is the side that I'll end up sleeping in. So we'll get that out of here. Okay, so new home for the Phoenix inverter. Got my wire way up above. All of my Victron gear lives in here. The VE direct cables from both of these guys go into the, uh, the Venus OS system. This one also has the VE direct, so that cable will get connected and go up into the wire way. I put in the uh, maximum size cable so I'm going to put in a two gauge and I got a real short run here this is where my power is so it's only about two feet of cable to get into the DC input of this thing and uh, it should work out pretty good got a couple other cables the remote and uh, the remote will end up out here somewhere probably over in this guy over here I've got my other Victron energy so Maybe I ended up putting the remote switch here or maybe up over here. Um, this is going to be the sleeping berth on this side. So maybe I even put it up in here so I can turn it on and off um, when I'm going to bed. So next thing is cabling. Okay, so the inverter is mounted in a technical compartment. There's a couple more things you need. So. Phoenix inverter has an on-off control. It's just a little switch plate and uh, you just run a little two-wire control to it. There's a little jumper on the inverter and so if you put power on it, it'll just turn on. But 
I figured I would just buy this little switch. It's only about 20 bucks. I can just run it up to where my control panel is and I can turn the inverter on and off. Um, or you can also uh, just connect it to your AC main. Whenever your AC main shuts off, you can turn your inverter on automatically if you want. Um, and then the VE cable. So I talked about these VE cables. Uh, VE direct to USB. This is how I'll connect it to my Raspberry Pi running Venus OS. Um, it also has the little isolator. So I made some cables and um, a lot of people commented on the cables. If you're in a van, no problem. You can use the homemade cables. But if you're in a boat, I would recommend buying these guys because they have the isolator. So you need galvanic isolation on a boat. And uh, all my other uh, VE Direct items, which is the MPPT charger and the DC shunt, I'm using the isolators just so I don't get galvanic corrosion. The other thing that I'm going to do is I bought a contactor. Okay, so this is a AC contactor, 110 volts, because I've got 110 volts in the boat. It's rated for 50 amps. Okay, so my connection is only 30 amps, and most boats are, are 30 amps or 50. So I've got 20 amps of reserve capacity here. It's got two normally open and two normally closed contacts. So it's a regular AC contactor that you would see in industrial type environment. Here you go. So you've got two normally open contacts, two normally closed contacts, and then you have these two contacts, which are the coil. And what it does is essentially it pulls the coil in and it pulls the contactor down and it makes these contacts. So what I'm gonna do is on these two main contacts, whenever there's AC power, so whenever the boat is plugged into shore power, it's gonna pull in and it's gonna activate the AC from shore. And these two will go to my outlet. Whenever I disconnect the boat, this contactor will drop out. These two contacts will make connection with these two down here which will be my inverter power. So I'm only got one outlet in the boat. It's a single branch circuit in the boat. And what I want to do is connect this to my outlet. This will get connected to my inverter, which will go to the outlet. And either one will power the, the outlet. Either shore power when the boat's plugged in, or the inverter will power the same outlet when the boat's not plugged into shore power, I'm running AC inverter. So essentially, yeah, I'll turn this guy on, but this guy will automatically drop and it will send the inverter power directly from the inverter to my single outlet in the boat. So then I don't have to mess around with cables. If I unplug the boat, turn the inverter on, I got power going through this thing to my outlet. Okay, so we got the Venus OS cable tied on, comes up here. Here's my mini hub. So my mini hub is up here. And I've got, so far I've got three of these isolated VE to USB connectors in here. There's the third one for the inverter, one's for the DC shunt, one's for the uh, solar charger. They go into this mini hub up here, and that goes up into my Raspberry Pi for my Venus OS. Now all three of these devices should be connected to Venus OS and I'll be able to see it on the Venus OS software. Okay, so here's where my single branch circuit is. That's hooked up to my shore power and I've got my Venus BMV right here telling me I'm charging 21 watts with the solar and this looks like a really good place for my switch to turn my inverter on and off because this is what I'll be turning on and off when I'm not connected to shore power so that kind of looks like a really good spot you plug it in and you realize that the inverter is not on just flick that switch okay guys that's it for me uh, next week we'll get the cables all connected and do a little power test on the uh, Phoenix inverter 
you like this kind of programming, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next weekend for some more DIY sailboat fun on Yola.